What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. The Guardians and the Red Sox game was historic yesterday. You got to see what they did. Baltimore, they sent out a 34-year-old pitcher who has not seen MLB action since 2017, and he was throwing straight gas. Dodgers fans, they are not happy with some of the team's recent play and roster construction moves. And LED of the Cruz, yeah, he's on pace to challenge what Ronald did last year in terms of the power and speed numbers. All of that and more in today's MLB recap. We post these every single day, so join the team. We're so close to half a million subscribers. And don't forget to use code fuzzy on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off all your tickets. And a reminder, code fuzzy on Underdog Fantasy will get you a $100 deposit match. They got baseball, playoff, basketball. It's a lot of fun. So like I said, the Orioles, they're starting a guy who has thrown 1,400 professional innings, but he has not pitched in the MLB since 2017. Albert Suarez is his name. He gets Edward Julian on a 96 fastball. Gunnar Henderson, he's so dang special. A perfect, perfect home run. That's his sixth of the year. Four in his last seven games. He's hitting 370 with nine home runs over that same stretch. Albert Suarez, he's back out there tossing darts. 97, 98 miles an hour. He gets Farmer to chase on the off speed. Then he blows it past Julian again with the 97 cement fastball outside. He goes five shutout. He's out for the sixth. Cal Farmer, he ran into an out at third. You should not do that, kids. Albert, his day is over. Five and a third shutout in his first start since 2017. Pablo Lopez was nasty as well. He had seven strikeouts through five and two thirds. He got Jackson and then Gunner on a heat-seeking missile. Alley, he caught up to the fastball, but Austin Martin tracked it down with shades of Byron Buxton. And then Austin used the bat. He ties it on a single. Then he comes around to score. Kyle Farmer puts the Twins up by one, and that didn't last long. Anthony Santander, he left the yard, and Mullins, he steps in with the winning run at first base, and he's just gonna do it himself. His fifth home run of the season is his first career walk-off home run. The Orioles are now 12-6. and six. I cannot wait for them to get back Kyle Bradish. All right, let's talk about some history. Tanner Houck did something that has not been done in nearly a decade at Fenway. But before we show him, we got to show his team getting a free run courtesy of a balk from Ben Lively, which I guess happened because he did not notify the umpire that he was going from the stretch to the windup. I guess that's a rule. Connor Wong, he jumped on a pitch for a second home run in as many games. Tanner Houck was grateful for that second run, but uh, he didn't need it because he went complete game shutout. This is the first time in nine years a complete game shutout happened in Fenway. Not only that, but he did it on 94 pitches, which means that he just threw a Maddox. A Maddox is a complete game shutout in under 100 pitches. One more fun fact, this game ended in an hour and 49 minutes, basically in the same time that you can watch Coco. That's the shortest MLB game since Armando Galarraga threw a perfect game on June 2nd, 2010. Okay, I know it wasn't a perfect game on paper, but he got the last out and the umpire botched it. Tanner Houck, he was that efficient though. Houck, Crawford, Pavetta, She's the Boston rotation as a whole has a 1.8 ERA. Now I got to show this A's game because look at Este Ruiz doing more damage. 110 miles an hour on that rocket home run. The guy who set the AL rookie stolen base record last year, he might have figured out the power side of baseball. St. Louis, they're the first team this year to figure out Paul Blackburn. They drove in three and the fourth. They're up by one. But here comes the A's. Tyler Nevin and Zach Gallop. They got back-to-back -back singles and Shea Langelier splits the gap. He gives the A's a 4-3 lead. Wait, I guess Donovan signaled that the ball was stuck, so they brought back the runners, only one score, or they brought back one runner, I should say. But then that run scored anyway. Abraham Toro put it in play. That's an RBI ground out. It's back to 4-3. And there's my boy, Daryl Hernandez. It's 5-3 A's. Tyler Nevin, he added an RBI single to make it 6-3 for Mason Miller, who might be MLB's most electric arm. Two more strikeouts, 102 to end it. The kid's nasty. Dalton Varsho has been hitting the square button a lot lately. If you have no idea what I just said, that's the power button in MLB The Show. He's got three home runs. Also, he's playing sick defense. Juan Soto, he doubled to cut the deficit to one. He scores Cabrera. And did he do it again? Not Soto with the double. Varsho with his second home run of the game. He's got four home runs, like four outs above average on defense already. He's been a pretty good power defense threat. Juan Soto then said, my turn. He wanted the long ball. He's hitting 352 with four home runs. Also, he's playing much better defense this year. Giancarlo Stanton, good Lord. 440, that's his fifth home run. I need a power surge from like 2015, 2016 when Giancarlo Stanton was winning MVPs. I need a 50 home run season from Giancarlo. The Jays are at 4-3 in the ninth inning. The Yankees got two on and then Toronto brought in a lefty to vase Trevino. Jose, he shot that fastball the other way for a huge RBI. That ties it at four. And then the captain delivered 
delivered. Aaron Judge, he got that to just stay fair. Clay Holmes, he's in there to try and save it. And there's the 2023 Gold Glover. Volpe got Vladdy by three steps. I don't know if that says more about Volpe or Vladdy. I, was he running full speed? I don't know. New York, they avoid the sweep. But Jays fans, they'll take an L if it means that Dalton Varsho just woke up. From the Jays to the Rays and now to another water creature, look at that fish go. Mike Trout goes yard again. Going that far the other way on an inside pitch, especially when that pitch is running in and cutting, that's not easy to do. Trout, he leads baseball with eight home runs. He also has three stolen bases. Jose Siri, he thought he had a home run, but it settled in Trout's glove. The game tying sack fly. Rendon untied it. Baseball is better when Trout is raking and Rendon isn't useless. Renjifo, he's getting it going now as well. He doubled in Ohapi right before Randy and his friends stormed the castle. Randy had an RBI single and Ahmed Rosario pimped one against a righty as well. He has a career high in barrel percentage, hard hit percentage because of course he's hitting it harder now that he's on the raise. Tampa put Pete Fairbanks in there with one run. Rendon clutched up, though. He ties it. Neto, he's going to try and take the lead, but the call's overturned. He was initially called safe, but again, he was out. Halos, they just get one run, but there's the second. Taylor Ward, he's been their best clutch hitter all season long, even better than Trout. He's now hitting 412 with runners in scoring position. The Angels are back to 500 after Strickland finished a clean ninth inning. Pete Fairbanks did not have a clean ninth inning, and then after the game, he gave one of the greatest post game interviews of all time. No, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck. So, you know, we're going to try and rectify that. But for right now, I'm going to be pretty pissed about it. Where do you kind of go from here? Is it looking at tape? Is it going through mechanics? Where do you kind of go from here? You tell me. I've tried that. You got an answer I'd love to hear. I'm not going to let it beat me up for, uh, you know, maybe give it till 10. It's 944 right now. We'll give it 16 minutes of of salt and then, you know, get back on the bump and, and figure it out. An all-encompassing suck. Okay, anyway, let's continue the trend of games that ended with a 5-4 score. The Braves and the Astros after this one. Adolis, he started with a sack fly. He scores Simeon. Kerry Carpenter went way gone. 430 feet. He's waking up. Adolis, he muscled up for a long fly ball. Is it going to leave? It's off the top of the wall. Replay did confirm that it was, in fact, a double. Jonah Heim basically made it a three-run home run for Adolis anyways because he knocked in Seager and Adolis with a single up the gut. Tarek Scooball is in disbelief because he's not used to giving up a ton of runs. The Tigers, they're still fighting. Parker Meadows, he finally hit his first of the year. He's got great defense, really nice speed, and the ability to take walks, but that's just his third base hit of the year. Javi, he somehow made contact. He said, first pitch, I'm swinging. Missed the barrel, and it actually worked in his favor. That ties it at four. So who's going to get that last run, the fifth run? The Rangers are Josh Smith. He has been a godsend this year. He came over in the Joey Gallo trade, if you don't remember. That's his 10th RBI. He's hitting 320. Kirby Yates, he's out there again for a save op. A perfect splitter. He closes it out. Same thing coming up. Someone won 4-5. to five. Your Don said, I'm your daddy. Lefty lefty is actually better for your Don. He's hitting like 460 after going lefty lefty off of Max Freed. Marcelo Zuna upped his hit streak to 16 games on a very very long home run. He's not just raking. Like, he's back to deleting baseballs. He's tied with Trout with eight home runs. Ronald, he's surprisingly still searching for his first home run. He's going to try the deepest part of the park. There it goes. He's got eight stolen bases, by the way, so he's going to steal another 60-plus, maybe even 70 again. Bregman and company, they got the call, and they answered. Alex, he tied it on a single. We know that Kyle Tucker is an extra base and RBI machine. Mauricio Dubon, he actually tagged a pitch as well, but he found a barrel for a home run. Remember, it's a 5-4 game, so is Houston going to win at 5-4, or the break? is going to make the comeback. The Houston bullpen has been atrocious. Presley, he's been awful as a setup guy. Abreu, he then booted a Matt Olson grounder, so it's a 4-3 game. Orlando Arcia, he sent one to center. That's a sack fly. We are knotted up at four. The next team to score is going to win. Arcia, he does it. He delivered with his second RBI. He was awful in the second half and the playoffs. But to start this year, he's hitting 380 with four outs above average. He might be on his way to another all-star game if he keeps this up. Jeremy Pena grounded into a double play. Rizal's fifth save is a clutch one. The Braves, the last time they were in Houston, they won the World Series. They come back. They win again. It's just mean. We had a doubleheader yesterday, so let's just get it out the way. The Royals were taking on the White Sox in front of like 13 fans, and I don't blame the White Sox fans for not supporting this team, but they missed a sick debut from rookie Jonathan Cannon. He's the first guy from the 2022 draft to make a start. He struck out Salvi. His family's hyped, and if this doesn't describe the 2024 White Sox, I don't know what else will. Fletcher fell over and then missed the ball. The run came around to score, and it was ruled an earn run because Fletcher never touched it. Such a stupid rule sometimes because, to me, that's an error. Shout out Paul DeYoung for having the rookies back. 
Act. Cannon was terrific. He went five innings on just three base hits. That's super cool, man. In a season marred by miserable play, Paul DeYoung had a big game. A rookie made the most out of his opportunity. We head to the eighth. Bobby Wood Jr. beat out the throw. He got on base for Salvi, but Bobby could basically crawl home because he didn't have to use his speed. Salvi went 431 off of Kopech. Renfro then beat... Salvi by one single foot. He goes 432. General James MacArthur, I mean closer, James MacArthur is in for the save. That's a scary double from Paul DeYoung. And uh, that's scary for the game of baseball. I don't have the data, but it feels like umpires have never been worse to start a season. That was an awful call. Again, an awful way to end game number one. Let's see if game number two can be a bit nicer to Sox fans. Andrew Vaughn, he laced a hard double. Dominic Fletcher, he finally did something productive. He singles home Vaughn. Towing the rubber is the KBO Cy Young winner, Eric Fetty. He was as good as it gets through five. He did not allow a single run, but the six proved to be a little bit different. Vinny Pascantino, he stung a double, and then Fetty walked Salvi on four pitches. He's out the game. Tanner, he's going to try and take it to the bank. I'm sorry, terrible joke, but yes, Tanner Banks, he got MJ to whiff. The White Sox are still up one after six, and look at that timing. First pitch of the frame, Gavin Sheets, he might be breaking out. He's been finding barrels and sweet spots like crazy. Banks, he's still out there for the seventh, and he allowed a single. He then threw a ball in the center. There's a runner to third. Renfro gets a free RBI. It's now 2-1 Chicago. Chicago and Whoa, whoa, whoa. I forgot that the former top prospect for the Yankees, Debbie Garcia, was on the White Sox. He goes two innings, he gets the save, and the White Sox, they avoid a seven-game losing streak. Three runs were scored total in that one, which is the same amount for these next two games combined. We have the Padres versus the Brewers and the Nationals versus the Dodgers. We'll talk LA after this one. Michael King, he turned in his best start by far as a Padre. He had a no-hitter through six with eight strikeouts. He got Contreras to swing and miss for his ninth K. The no-hitter is still intact, and uh-oh, Jake Bowers, he almost ruined it, but Matthew you batting or baiting, he saves it with a sick web gem. He flips it to Michael King and Adamus ruined it. Michael King, he tossed a clean seventh, so he's still out there at 0-0 in the eighth. Tatis is up with the runner at third. There's no way that Adam Uribe beats the speedy Tatis, but he does. He keeps the game scoreless. That was an amazing play. Bryce Terang, he's going to take over for the Brewers. He singles. He then steals second base. He has an MLB best nine stolen bases. Then you have King striking out Chorio. That's 10 punch outs. He's out after that. So his New York buddy, Wandy Peralta, he's tasked with trying to get the last out. But Blake Perkins, he found the third base and shortstop hole. Terang, he's going to turn on the turbos. He scores. This was very much a Mets Jacob DeGrom start where you have a no hitter through six or seven innings. You add double digit strikeouts to that. But DeGrom loses one nothing, just like Michael King. But to be honest, Michael King has gotten a a lot of run support this year, so I can't be too upset at the Padres. To Dodger Stadium we go, and here's another MLB debut. Landon Knack, he was out there and his family was in attendance, and CJ says, F your family. Now, I don't know why I said that, but that's kind of what happened. CJ does kind of ruin the moment on his fifth home run of the year. He has 15 home runs and 33 stolen bases over his last 80 games played. Joey Manessis, he lifted a sky-high sack fly, and that's kind of it. Knack, he gets the double play in the fifth. He's showing that he can really settle down. He got CJ Five pitches in the fifth inning. That was it. So that's a solid debut if you ask me. Jake Irvin, who was the starter for Washington, he was very efficient. Five shutout on like 60 pitches. He was looking like Tanner Houck. He got some huge help from the diving Luis Garcia. He robs Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux cannot buy a hit right now. Jake, he got more infield defense help. Joey Manessa steals a double from Freddie and then gets the double play. Kyle Finnegan, he's got seven saves now. And for the first time in 2024, the Dodgers were shut out. By the way, Jake Irvin, he's done that in back-to-back -back starts. He had six shutouts one hit last time then he goes another six shutout yelled the Dodgers to four hits with six K's he's been very good now I'm seeing a lot of fans calling Gavin Lux a bust and they're using Michael Bush's breakout the Cubs against Gavin Lux but I don't understand that because Bush sucks defensively at second base he's never going to be a middle infielder or even a quarter outfielder Gavin Lux is coming off an ACL tear and we just saw what Ronald and Belly can do after their finally healthy so relax Gavin he's gonna be fine don't forget in 2022 he hit 311 with a near 390 on base percentage from May 23rd to September 19th Gavin Lux is very good he's coming off an ACL tear relax that was not a bad trade you opened up two roster spots by sending Bush and El Monte to the Cubs you get Teoscar with one of those roster spots and James Paxton here we go the Giants and the Marlins Jorge Soler is facing off against his old team again Tyro Estrada turned on a slider to bring Soler all the way home it's one nothing out after six, Trevor Rogers, he did not let that early run phase him. He's going to get through six with, oh no, Tim Anderson's out there and he plays a miserable shortstop. No idea why he's not at second base, but then again, Luis arrives there. Luckily, nothing came of that. The Giants left them loaded. Brian De La Cruz, he's been raking lately. He ruined Keaton Wynn's chance at a shutout. He's been deleting baseball. It's talking about Brian De La Cruz. That's his third home run. Five consecutive games with an extra base hit. Is that Luis arise? I didn't even know that he could do that. So, 
that's sick. San Francisco does take the lead, but that was one of the better double plays I've seen from him and really anyone this year. Matt Chapman, he line went down the line. The Giants got a big insurance run. Luis Arise, he got a taste of his own medicine. That double play ends the eighth inning threat. Camilo Duvall, he got his third save. So no win for Keaton Wynn, but he did go six innings, one earned run with four strikeouts. That's a very solid start. We've shown a lot of low scoring games, so we're going to switch it up as the Rockies got the game's first run on an Elias Diaz tapper to shortstop, but Kyle Schwarber got it back. That's homer number 250 for his career, and then Trey attacked on the first pitch, back-to-back -back home runs. Schwarber was barely in the dugout before Trey was going yard. JT got on with the single, and boom, he's going to bring JT all the way home. He got a lucky bounce to kind of hit it away from the right fielder. That's an RBI double. Then there's an RBI single from Marsh. That's his 10th RBI of the year. JT brought home their fifth after he grounded out. That was all for Christopher Sanchez, by the way, who maybe threw his best start as a big leaguer. Six shutout, 11 punch outs. He has a 2.5 ERA and a nasty 10.5 strikeouts per nine. That is impressive for a four starter in baseball. Wait until they get Mick Abel and Andrew Painter. JT, he walked another pitch. This time, a two run home run, his fifth. Um, Hey, 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 what's going on? It's now 7-4 to four in the 8th. What's going on? The Rockies are rallying after some terrible pitching from the Phillies, and it got worse. Ezekiel Tovar clutched up with the bases loaded base hit. It's now a one-run game. Tovar is hitting almost 310 with three home runs, 10 RBIs, and two stolen bases. He's 22 years old. He's very good. Now we have a save up. Jose Alvarado, he's cool with that. Stott, he grabs the Bouchard pop-up and... Yeah, the Philly sweep. We're going to start the Pirates and Mets game with Pete Alonso belly flopping for a nice play. That's big for Luis Severino. Sevi, he can still dial up the fastball. That's a 96 heater past Jared Triolo. He's all of a sudden kind of looking like prime Sevi the last few starts. O'Neill Cruz, buddy, you can't get thrown out there. You're very, very fast. I don't know if he was jogging, but that was a bobble. That was a noodle throw, and they still were able to turn two. Brian Reynolds, he got the Pirates on the board with an infield single. Starlin Marte answered. He put a charge into a Bailey Falter curveball that just got way too much of the plate. Sawinski, he's going to try and take it back, and it was close, but that's a two-run home run. The Mets, they're out in front after Marte's third home run. He also has three stolen bases, so he's looking pretty healthy again. Tyrone Taylor, he added two more RBIs. He's been a steal for them. Harrison Bader ripped the Mets' second two-run tater of the game, and then Brent and Nemo, he made it a full-blown blowout. That's another two-run knock. Maybe seven to one is already considered a blowout, but nine to one is for sure a blowout. Severino, he now has a 1.1 ERA over his last three starts. You love to see it. Cattell Marte versus lefties is the easiest sports bet maybe ever. That's a leadoff home run. Mike Talkman got to talk and he tagged one. Not a home run, but it is a game-tying double. Jan Gomes, he made Brandon Fott pay for leaving a changeup down the middle. Chicago, they steal the lead, but Cattell, he's now three for three. He ties it back up. Brandon Fott, He's still fighting, but belly bombs were back. Another 83 mile per hour hanging changeup in the zone. Bellinger parks it for his third of the year, but belly wanted more. He reaches into Narnia, the other batter's box. Jace Peterson, he dove like he was the CPU in an MLB The Show showdown. The ball drops. Dansby scores. Bellinger ends up at third. Bush, he delivers with a lefty lefty RBI single because of course he did after we just talked about Gavin Lux. That's big right there. More lefty lefty action. If Jock Peterson is doing this against lefties, he's hitting 333 on the season in general. That's going to mean good things. Smiley, he got Jace to roll over. So the Cubs, they take the series in Arizona. The Cubs are 11-7, and seven, and we're just hoping that Seiya Suzuki can recover quickly. I'm going to steal a very popular home run call, Ellie De La Cruz with a Cruz missile. Guys, Ellie now has five home runs and seven stolen bases. He's just casually on pace for 45 home runs and 63 stolen bases. Cal Raleigh, he's someone high and deep as well, his third of the year. Seattle is such a pretty ballpark, by the way. I love my time there at the All-Star game. Mitch Garber. Good Lord, he hit that baseball to space. That's his first as a Mariner. If he can get going and then J-Rod gets going with the pitching, I mean, look at what Bryce Miller did. The command was very good. He used that fastball often. He used that splitter to perfection as well. He has a 1.8 year rate and 24 strikeouts through his first four starts. Josh Rojas, he's hitting 340. Three after that, no doubter. It's 3-1 Mariners. Make it 4-1 now because Mitch Hanniger just keeps driving runs in. Jonathan Classe, he scores easy and he still slid because that's what fast guys do. The Reds handed Cal Raleigh a free RBI on a bases loaded walk and Austin Voth, he got Benson chasing to wrap things up. Seattle is an incredible team on paper. Do not let them get hot. Another recap in the books. Thank you guys so, so, so much for your support over the last few weeks. I am almost speechless at your kindness and your support, but thank you so much. Enjoy the web gems. The one move. That's rolled towards third. Morrell off balance. Oh, nice play. Loop to short. Neto has it dived. It's a double play. Oh, a great leaping catch by Triolo. It's for Miller, one walk, giving up a home run. Oh, yeah! Olay, baby! Urias, two down! Two. 
Stroke toward right. Diving play on one bounce for Geloff to his left. Up and over to 